So here's the power supply when you open it. You just take out these four screws and there you go. And the red wires are the high amperage wires. They're about 5 volts, 5 to 8 volts. And the yellow and the black are the 12 volt wires. See, I'm going to clip all that down and get them on my connectors. But if you look in the box here, you're going to see your capacitor, your toroid, toroid transformers. Okay, these are toroids. And then you have capacitors down in the bottom there. And if you look on the sides here, you can see the transistors hooked up to, you can see the transistors in there hooked up to that huge heat sink. Okay, and you have a few resistors. Ceramic capacitors. Just give you an idea of what's in here. You have the AC connection that's right there. So this is what it looks like inside a DC full bridge rectifier, basically. Okay? This is a computer power supply. It's very efficient. This is a thousand watt power supply. So you can see where having a really good power supply is crucial to any HHO torch setup. You're going to have to have an understanding of DC rectification, you know, go, being able to take AC power supply and turning it into a DC square wave. So I'm at 2 amps now, see it slowly climbs. And they all do that, they'll slowly climb in voltage and watts and the gas and the rate just gets faster and faster. I'm going to go ahead and light this flashback so you can see it. Watch. It's pretty cool, huh? So using a, a PC computer power supply gives you a very powerful power supply that doesn't cost a lot of money, it's very effective, it's safe, it's simple, it's lightweight, it looks cool, and not only that, it's high amperage. Okay, this thing puts out 30 amps. That's pretty good, that's a thousand watts. That's a lot more than I need for one fuel cell. I can use this to run two or three separate fuel cells if I needed to. And you can see how I did the connections here. Let's plug this thing in and make sure it's tested. Oh wow, look, it stays on, that's right. If you connect the, the green and the blue power, it stays on, the green and the blue wires. So that's what it looks like in there. So you gotta make sure you have the right connection so this thing stays on when you want it to, so when you turn it on. And a really good power supply also has a switch back here. See, I could shut down, okay? I don't need to use the switch on here, okay? But I can use this switch. If you have a power supply that doesn't have that switch right there, go ahead and get you a power uh, power strip that does. So we're hooked up right here. Make sure it's putting out 12 volts. You can see my really good connections there. I use silver solder. Okay. You can see right there. Remember I was telling you about the atoms on the table of elements and how some of them have better electron shells and pass electricity really well, like copper. Copper is a very good conductor of electricity, has low resistance. Okay, when you make connections, you'll have low resistance. And you'll notice these symbols right here, the ohm symbol, the water molecule, sine wave, square wave. You'll see these symbols in a lot of Egyptian pictures. You'll notice that they wear the ohm symbol upside down on their heads. And you'll see the water molecule on a lot of their cartouches. Just wanted to point this out. But you've got to make those really good copper and silver solder connections to have those good connections so you have low resistance. So if you connect the green and the blue wires, the power stays on, okay? It's going to give you 12 volts. You can see I got my voltage meter connected to the sides here where the power supply is hooked up to the fuel cell, okay? You can see I'm running at full power right now. This is about what I like to run this fuel cell at, okay? Two and a half amps, 
300 watts. Okay, I'm just making this small flame. That's what this is here for. I just want to use this for soldering and small stuff. I'll hook up the bigger reactors later for longer run times. Okay. But you can clearly see you have 12 volts here. And the way I was able to do that, when you open up that power supply, you just take these four screws out right here. And this gives you access. Don't mess with the fan screws. You don't have to mess with the fan. Just open it up and set the fan off to the side. Okay, it's going to look like that in there. You're going to have to go through and connect the green and the blue, okay, and the power stays on. Okay, sometimes it's the green and the gray, depending on what power supply you have and where you bought it. But the green and the blue is what kept this uh, shark intake power supply. This thing is silent. It's a really good power supply. I just wanted you to see this and how I hooked it up here. So it's running this little fuel cell. I have a computer power supply, okay? That's how I got it to stay on, by connecting the wires correctly. You can see them down in there through the fan, how I have them coiled up. That's the blue and the green, and it stays on, and I was able to read a continuous 12 volts. So you're going to have all these wires and you're going to have to cut off the ends of them. It's going to look like this, like spaghetti, okay? And you're only after the yellow and the black, okay? You're after the yellow. You've got you to gotta go ahead and splice all these together and roll them up into a coil, okay? And that's how I got the yellow side and the black side, okay? Not hard to do. You can see how they come out here. I even kept the shielding for it, you know? I made really nice connections. And that's how I was able to do that. Okay, it's going to look like that. So it's a little work, but it's better than spending hundreds of dollars on a DC power supply that's going to su supply you with the same amount of amperage. This is a 30 amp power supply. It's uh, up to a thousand watts. You know, so I have a lot of room to play with right here. I'm only 326 watts right now. Okay. So I have a long way to go. That flame can get a lot longer. Okay. But that's what you're going to get into when you open that thing up. You've got to make those connections solid. And you've got to be able to solder the end onto that copper lug, okay? So you can see my kilowatt right here. This is a very important piece of the technology, okay? So when you convert from an AC sine wave and you're going to go convert to a DC square wave to run your power supply, you want to make sure you at least have a power supply that's 550 to 1,000 watts. Okay, 20 or 30 amps, because that's going to determine the size of your flame when you get this thing running, okay? You want to be able to pull at least a few hundred watts so you can make different sized flames. Okay, and get an idea of what's inside these power supplies. You got your toroidal transformers. These store energy different than a capacitor. They store energy in electromagnetic fields. You're going to see a lot of these inside there. Here's a really huge resistor. Here's a full bridge rectifier. That's a 50 amp, 1000 volt full bridge rectifier. This is how you set them up right there, in case some of you didn't know. Okay, the AC line connects on these outer corners, and then you'll have this one that's bent here. That's the DC positive output comes out right here and right here. Okay, the negative is over here and the positive is right there. And they usually label these things. So you can see the little positive right there, they label it. So that's how a full bridge rectifier works. I could hook that right up to the AC line here if I wanted to and turn it into 120 volts DC, okay? It would actually come out to be 110 volts DC. This gives you an idea of what's in these power supplies, okay? How that connections are made. That's what's in here, that's what's inside here. You're taking an AC sine wave, okay, and turning it into a DC 12 volt 30 amp power supply in square wave. Okay, I got my electrolyte in there. It's not like KOH, you know, when you use sodium carbonate, you're going to need quite a few tablespoons. I've got eight tablespoons inside this reactor right here. And I've shortened it. I've taken the riser off. Okay, I've taken this riser off that you normally see on there. And I shortened it because I just wanted to use this little wand to desolder all these parts that you see here. I was able to use this as a desoldering device to get all these little parts you see here, the transistor, the capacitor, the DC transformer, okay, the resistor, 
there's a lot of transistors inside these okay they step up the power let's give you an idea of what's inside these things full bridge rectifiers that's how this power supply works you know you want to at least have a really good one a nice powerful one if you're going to do HHO because once you turn on this power once I come over here and click this on okay everything starts to come to life you see now I'm making gas now once you look in here you can see the gas is starting to be produced take a look at this this is what tells you how many amps you're pulling see I can go to amperage and see that I'm only pulling 1.98 almost 2 amps at 228 watts okay this is a very important piece of the technology so you can see what kind of electricity you're pulling this power supply has shark technology it's silent you can't even hear it running okay so I wanted you to see some of this I'm gonna move on let me edit the video So a computer power supply is simple, cheap, effective, and it's not hard to put one of these together. I mean, you could spend a thousand dollars on a DC power supply, like for a ham radio or something like that, when you could just go get a computer power supply. Some of these you can find right in the garbage. I mean, they're heading right to the dump, and they provide years and years and years of excellent DC power. So that's how you're going to convert that AC square sine wave into a DC square wave. Okay, so you're going to need that. You're going to need a DC power supply. And computer supply, power supplies work really, really well. So you're going to need this kilowatt to plug into the wall so you can see exactly how many amps and how many watts you're pulling when you're performing electrolysis. Okay. This is a really small flame here off this really small water fuel cell. Okay. You can see my connections right here, the copper connections on the side. And electricity will always take the path of least resistance. So you want to make sure you have nice solid connections that are clean. Okay, and you have to have wires and lugs and bolts and things rated for the amperage of the current you're going to carry. I'm going to take a look in here. Some of you have already seen this in my other video how this works. So this is what you're going to get when you open one of these things up, okay? There's a lot of stuff in there. And you're going to either connect the gray and the green or the blue and the green. And this one, it was the blue and the green to make it stay on. To make this power supply stay on, where I could read it on my voltage meter at 12 volts, okay? Where it was showing me that I was getting 12 volts out of here. Let me see if, well, it's kind of hard to do with one hand, but I'm getting 12 volts out of this power supply. So that's the inside. It really is simple. All you got to do, you can see my green and blue wire that I've connected together. I've rolled them up and tied them up on the side here. Okay. All the other wires that I've removed, I've covered with black electrical tape. And then you can clearly see the yellow and the black that come out here. They're all connected together to the end of these leads. So I'm going to turn on my voltage meter and I'm going to test it. This is the first time I've turned it on. Let's make sure it works. There you go. So I hope that helps you understand how the power supply works and where I'm getting my energy from.